Were there any Arkansas guard people? Uh, there were more than Alabamians, and I would guess there were Arkansas, but not in not in casualties. No, but I mean, none of them, uh, no Arkansas people were killed with it. No, not that I know of. I'm pretty uh, sure not. That only four were killed. That's right, and they were all Alabamas, I understand well, it. Let's check it out. Well, I'd like to find out about when these Arkansas people were recruited, whether right. it was before, and they didn't fly any combat missions, as I, or did they? Have you got any information? Let's find out. I don't know. Is somebody looking that up? Yeah, I'll check it. Just call me right back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the, um, nobody from Arkansas flew in combat. There were 24 from Bad. Arkansas. Yeah. Did they fly that day? Were they any in the plane? None flew in combat over the Bay of Pigs. They were not, in other words, sent on those missions. Oh, who? Most of those were other fellows. Good. All the four that were killed were Alabama. I knew that all the four that were killed, yeah. but there were some other Americans. There were. There, there were. there were some others, and I'm trying to find out what states, but so far all they've reported is negative on Arkansas. They're sure of that? Well, that Dick Helm says he's sure. I see. And what about... Uh, uh, you don't know when they were recruited, do you? Um, I've got, I've got to look up that memo. Now, the question me. is whether... He says nobody from Arkansas flew into combat. Uh, we're just thinking maybe I'll get the Defense Department to say that. Or the agency, or... Well, the agency has been reluctant. Yeah, I know they have. But, I mean, Forbes is saying that I left Arkansas boys to die. Recruited in the net were recruited, but left hanging by the administration of Kennedy. That doesn't beat him nothing. Well, okay, I'll talk to Dick Helms. Let me just show him. Right. Right. He says that Helms at the CIA plane. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely not, sir. Yeah. I've just verified and re-verified that. Yeah. That's absolutely certain. Why were they down in Nicaragua? Or so they were in Guatemala. Yeah. And there were eight of them who were uh, officers, in other words, pilots, navigators, planners. Yeah. were involved in training the Cubans. The other 16 were involved in crown crews, mechanics and things of that kind. I see. How come they were recruited in the South and not the North? I noticed Forbes said they couldn't recruit in the North. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. There is. About it. I think that was pure happenstance. Yeah. The uh, states that were represented were Georgia. There was one from California. There were several from Washington, D.C., and then there was Alabama and Arkansas. Oh, I see. Now, these were recruited from? All from National Guard units. I see. And Eight. they totaled 124. Recruitment. 124? Yeah. They recruited. Okay. And then yeah. we had some others that were, yeah. some pilots from CAT that were rotated in and out and so forth. Okay. Good. Fine. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. You bet. Oh, hello, Larry. Yes. Hey, tell me, uh, Mac here says that he hears that Armistead Selden is going to have a report on what we're doing to stop subversion in Latin America, and it's going to be rather critical. Now, we are working on this, and we've got the control group, and we've got a program which we're presenting. And as always, it takes a little longer than yeah. it seems to, but I wondered if we could, I guess the cell is on this committee. I yeah. thought we ought to try to mute the criticism. Uh, I think if they would suggest a program, they don't need to skin us on it. We got well, if Selden has a degree of control there, he has talked to uh, Wilson and I last week along these lines and uh, gave us a uh, well, uh, I would have to say almost total assurance, and we're certainly in a position to review with him what he's going to do if Mac wants to uh, provide me with some thoughts that uh, as to a, a line. Uh, hell, I, I think we can work it out. Well, I think if you could, uh, would be available to tell him what we're trying yeah. to do, or if we could right. answer any questions, and give him any material we've got on our program, which he could put forward as a self right. program, and, and urge us to carry out these actions, just not to be awfully harsh about our not doing it because it's really up to these other countries. Yeah. Like Mexico and the rest of them. Oh, well, uh, I'll get moving on that and uh, I'll probably get... You didn't get, get, get my, my hat? Yes, I've talked to him. He say? was going to talk. To, he hadn't even heard of it. Yeah. He said that uh, there was nothing in the, the early editions down there, so I reviewed it with him. He said he just couldn't understand the damn thing at all other than... Uh, Ted Favre has been having legislative trouble down there this year for no good reason because he hasn't much of a program, but he says he's been holding on to his gut. He's got stomach trouble anyway and been grousing pretty well. He spent the, the day before yesterday with him, didn't hear a word about this sort of thing. Would get to him as fast as he could. He thought it would be this afternoon be back to me. Yeah, uh, you told him there were no Arkansas. Fire. Yeah, I went over the whole thing with him, and right. he said, I'll grab him, and I'll get back to you the minute okay. I talk to him. Right. Uh, you heard about so that? It happens that uh, one, one minute ago, uh, uh, Mr. Jerry Siegel of the Washington Post uh, called, and uh, he's just 
this instant come into my office with something that he said he was to bring me from Phil. All right. Now, uh... Well, why don't you read it, if you would, and then perhaps you and I should talk and it's a real, it's murderous. Okay. Oh, well, he's going to really cause us an endless grief with this one. If they print it, then he wants to print it for Friday. Now, the question really is how we try to prevent him from carrying because it's really what he's doing is this is really a, an attack on, well, I don't know what it is, but it certainly is it be a hell of a headache for me, which may be part of his mixed-up purpose, but uh, and very bad for the corporation and the directors and everybody. Would you read it and call me back? Yes, sir. Okay. Hold, hold just a second. Yeah. Um, now, now, did uh, Jerry, did Phil say for you to bring this to me, and then I was to read it, and then, and then what, uh, that I would know what to do? Oh. Oh, what, did he indicate in any way that after I read it, I was to get in touch with him, with Phil? Oh. Yeah. When, when, oh, when, when did you take it to Dungan? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Well, all right. Um, did they say that he has decided to print it or that he's susceptible to reasoning on it? Oh, he, he, oh I tried. Now, Mr. Siegel is saying that Phil, uh, as of the last word that they had from him, still seems determined to, to want to publish this yeah. before the hearings start, which and they start on Monday. Yeah. So uh, uh, let me read it and let me talk to Mr. Siegel and then I'll have to, and then I'll be back right. in touch with you. Okay, fine. All right, Mr. Right President. Fine. Uh, Hello. Hello. Nick, what do you think of the uh, bomb Graham? <laughs> uh, not very much. Uh, yeah. uh, the uh, the problems that he raises and discusses in there are all problems that uh, uh, were thought of and discussed at length before we went ahead with this corporation. Yeah. Every one of them is anticipated or in the statute itself. Uh, and uh, what he fears coming to pass could only come to pass if nobody uh, did their job, nobody in the government did their job. Yeah. Yeah. That's the short answer to it. And uh, that can be... Uh, I wonder if we would have been better off with a government corporation. I uh, think the one way of making sure that AT&T ran that would have been to have a government corporation. Yeah, they would have. Because you'd have then had to, uh, the one... Uh, the one you say you would have had a... We had 70% of the use would have been on contract to AT&T. Yeah. And they just would have never had to invest. Well, I think uh, we ought to... I tell you what, Graham is now... I mean, uh, uh, clock slip is reading it. I think we ought to get up an answer which Pastore might make or which somebody else might make that would sort of respond to these points so we'll have it available in case because I understand now he wants to print it Friday. Yeah, I hope he does. For, well, his, for his sake, I really hope he does. Well, I think it would be harmful for everybody because yeah. the hearings begin Monday now. The only thing he does is his final suggestion is it's awful weak. He goes in like a lion, comes out like a lamb. The final suggestion is that we just, we have six directors who are full-time. I mean, that's hardly a very adequate reform and that's all he's suggesting, isn't it? Yeah, well, of course, what I've wanted, and all along, what we've been pushing on is to get management because the director shouldn't be doing this, Mr. Yeah, President. This yeah. is the job of management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got Charrick. we got two now, and they're going to get some, some more, I hope, very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where the six men he's talking about, the directors don't go around to this kind of thing. This is the management job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to get up some sort of an answer which Pastore could make, if yeah. necessary, uh, to him, that we could print at the same time that this is printed? Yeah. He'd be the best fellow, I think, to do it. All right, we'll do that. Good. This, this would be printed wet Friday. So we'll if it is, and we're going to try to kill it, but yeah. it, I'm just thinking if we fail. It doesn't have to be voluminous, but it would be. And then I suppose we would have to brief our directors before they go up there for confirmation so that uh, if this is going to be printed, we'd probably have to have a meeting with them, which you and Ted Sorensen and so on could go over some of these points which would be made by the committee if, if Graham's charges are made that would be could be answered, particularly Charrick and uh, Ben. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. We'll right. do that. Thanks. Okay. Hello. 
How are you? Good. Good. Uh, you got a statement you might make tomorrow in connection with unemployment? I testified. Unemployment. The reason it has gone up by th three tenths of a percent. Well, the uh, largest factors in it are a substantial increase in the workforce beyond uh, Why would that normal. be in the winter? Of... We're trying to figure out what it is. As nearly as we can figure it, most of the, the largest increase uh, is uh, in connection with applications for part-time employment. Now, these are two figures that jump around pretty badly. Yeah. And uh, the increase in the workforce is 700,000, uh, most of which is... How long a period? Oh, in one month. My God. Now, most of that is seasonal. It, it always jumps between uh, January and February, uh, but uh, it's about 200,000 too high. Uh, the part-time uh, employment requests make up about half of this. Teenagers make up about half of it. Yeah. Uh, these, uh, but all I'm saying to you is that these are three. This, the workforce yeah. figure, the part-time figure, and the teenagers are all three of them figures that jump around from month to month. Yeah, so we but, get it. Uh, but uh, it's hard to bite in anything more than that. And, well, uh, you're going to say something about our programs to tie, tie it in with the tax program, the youth unemployment thing. Yeah, what else? Youth unemployment, tax. What else is that? Uh, uh, education, I would think. I think. Uh, let's see, we'll, cool. we'll try to work in a tie-in on that. Uh, I gather we don't see anything yet about accelerated public works, is that right? Well, I think we accelerated public works. I think we've got to have wait on that. I think that's right. You know, and then we added another month. What? I'm is that vocational? Oh, well, you can, you know the stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure I see the tie-in on education. Gotcha. I'll see, but... Well, the only thing I was thinking of about the, uh, skills, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, permanent, and the unemployment thing we've got to tie it in with, too. Yeah, maybe not education. But I think that's a little hard. All right. Okay. Okay. Fine. We'll do. We'll check it Thank over you. there. Okay. Fine. 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 Boston is a pretty good little issue. Yeah. Uh, can't we do something about that? Yeah. Well, actually, this whole damn thing is uh, up in the air now. Guys like Muskie and others. Uh, guys, by the time I put together all the inquiries we've had today, I think it'll probably cover the whole waterfront, and we'll just have to review this entire operation. I'm going to... They didn't clear this at all, did no. they? No. Well, they, it was a rather... Very frankly, it was just a stupid operation all the way. I've got Mahaffey on the other line, incidentally, yeah. who has just come from the governor. Yeah. And, of course, he said the governor... It's the old story that he never said it would get you in 64, and reporters have called him all, all over the country, and he has denied he has said that. Yeah. That uh, he uh, still insists that Arkansas Flyers participated in the invasion, however. Yeah, well, you tell them what they did is they participated in the training down there in Nicaragua, yeah. Guatemala, but they didn't fly in combat. Yeah, that's uh, what I had told him uh, initially. That's what he told the governor, and the governor said, well, hell, he wasn't quarreling. He said, uh, uh, he, the governor's going to call me later tonight, uh, but he said, hell, I, uh, I not, don't want to get in any... Well, uh, why don't you just tell them that what we want to do is just put the goddamn thing to rest. Right. So whatever they can do down there to just shut it all up is fine with us, but the gods issued some statement about it. He can uh, just say that they were... Uh, he can do, try to cover his tracks, and we'll try to end it. Yeah, all right. Okay. right. And then we ought to get this thing straight. Now, I don't want it around that we're taking business out of Scranton, out to, which is depressed up to... So I think we ought to put out a statement saying that uh, we're holding up, or the Secretary of the Treasury ought to put it out in the morning, we're holding up all these transfers. All right. Because I just think it's stupid. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Oh. Hello, Mr. Okay. Fowler on the line, Mr. Lincoln. Yes, okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Oh, listen, uh, this is a goddamn thing of Kaplan's is causing us a lot of headache. I'm, I'm just uh, rubbing my head from all over the place, yes. What is, uh, how can they be that dumb over there? Will you tell me that? I mean, Christ, to take something out of Scranton and put it in Boston, which is a depressed area, just making it easy for the governor down there and everybody in Pennsylvania to say we're taking care of Teddy. I mean, uh, are they out of their minds? What, save a million dollars four years from now? Well, uh... He doesn't have any goddamn sense. He may be a genius, but he doesn't have any sense. Uh, we're, uh, we're, uh, Eating it. Uh, got, we, uh, the, the real question, I think, is whether, I, uh, my own suggestion, sir, would be this, that we get him to answer this tomorrow. Let's see how much, uh, follow-up there is from, uh, from fellows like Cotton and, uh, Rockefeller, and let's see if this is a 24-hour wonder and whether it passes off, uh... My... Scranton is the one that really bothers me more than New York. You know, they've got such a bad unemployment situation. Well, there. it's it's a it's a very minuscule number. I'm getting him to I've had him on the phone for the last hour, uh, getting me every fact I can get my hands Wasn't on. Wasn't he aware that this would have a bad repercussion or did he think everybody's oh, gonna Yes, uh, we 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 went into this in great detail about what the consequences would be and I had him go up and see everybody and 
God's name about I it. I wish he talked to O'Brien. Did he talk to O'Brien? I don't know whether he talked to O'Brien or not. Well, you tell him in the future to talk to O'Brien. Christ, I'm the one who gets all the hell in these things. Kaplan doesn't. So I, uh, the only problem, uh, so make sure then, then at least we got responsibility if it goes wrong. Now, I think that uh, we ought to consider tomorrow issuing a statement saying that, uh, uh, by the secretary in which he says, or Captain, that this matter is going to be uh, reviewed and, be, and there'll be no action will be taken until the review is complete. Then you could put it to rest for a couple of weeks and then we could uh, eat it if we had to. Well, uh, there is, of course, this line to take. Let me just cite you the New York situation just yeah. to take one. Yeah. Actually, there, there are 776 people in that New York office. 602 of them are going to be retained. 174 are marked as surplus. No taxpayer services are being transferred. And then, of course, this is all part of a program for economy and efficiency. Now, that's the general line of answer that would be given to Rockefeller to his telegram to you. Yeah. Uh, question of whether we get out a press release on, on that, uh, or whether... I don't care so much about Rockefeller. He's always yelling about economy and efficiency. That's right. We government. Could, we could but, of course, the unfortunate in. thing is they're moving it to Massachusetts. <laughs> that ties in. But I'm, I'm more concerned a little about Scranton. That's got about 170 people. Uh, no, I think it'll turn out to be uh, just about, maybe less than that. I don't have the Scranton figures. I've asked... Well, would you that. consider, uh, in any case, then, that you, uh, an announcement, uh, what you and I talk about it tomorrow, but this I, is what... I, I would we consider. might have either cap or the secretary say that this matter is going to be reviewed there'll be no changes made until the review is completed and uh, then that would uh, that might then we could always eat it if we had to but let's consider that in the morning all right i don't want to have a lot of people in pennsylvania think we're screwing them for teddy yeah well they they, they couldn't uh, really on on the on no the but you know how these emotional matters get going they go to the, it goes to philadelphia Listen. and to pittsburgh the people from scranton they go to Pennsylvania. They stay in Pennsylvania. They stay in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, uh, and they're just a few, and uh, not, and uh, they we keep an office there. Yeah. And uh, actually, I think that when I get the facts in well, hand, get the facts on Scranton. That's uh, the one that disturbs we, me. We most. can deal with that one. Detroit, we're going to take care of anyway because we've got a commitment on that. Uh, but uh, I'll talk to you then tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm on top of this just as fast as I can. Have okay. been for the last hour or two Good. when it hit me. I. I've been buried in the tax bill, so uh, right. Yeah, okay. I, I just wasn't on top of it. Right on. Right. Thank you. Right on. Hello. Hello, Mr. President. George. How are you? Did you have a? We've got some information, you know, that Jock's visit has been canceled to the United States by De Gaulle. That he didn't want him coming around here. A French minister would be misunderstood. That lends a special interest again to Adlai's trip. Have we ever found out what the genesis of that was? I, I spoke to him yesterday. He's coming down to, uh, tomorrow uh, to be here Friday. What yeah. he said was this, that he's going over to a NATO war college as a uh, yeah. session, and he had been asked to go over and, and give a speech. And uh, he had simply mentioned to uh, the uh, French uh, delegate in, at the UN in New York that he was going to do this, and this fellow had said, well, I hope you'll go see uh, Coop while you're there. And uh, uh, Stevenson said, well, I, uh, I don't have any particular business to do. And he said, well, I think he'd like to see you. And so uh, uh, this fellow went back to Paris, and apparently he arranged the meeting with Coop. But I don't get, didn't get the sense from Adley that there had been anything firm arranged with the general. Oh, I see. Okay, fine. But this fellow had simply said that... Uh, well, as long as we keep it on that basis, that's yeah. fine. He's Just... going to be down on Friday, and I yeah. think he could, we could either have him... When does he go? When does he go? Uh, it's the end of the month. Right. But, uh, okay. A couple of weeks from now, anyway. Good. Okay. Thanks, right. George. Thank you, George. Well, you see, the Pentagon also pointed out, the Defense Secretary Robinson said in the news conference that there were no U.S. military personnel operating in the invasion. That's the point that I didn't want to make, is if they make that generalization, then it looks like the distinction between a godsman and not a godsman is the key thing. Right. I thought we went into that. We did, and he, when I heard the statement, it was flatly that no Arkansas National Guardsmen were there. The fact of the matter is that former U.S. guardsmen, military guardsmen from Alabama, were in combat right. operations. So what's the sense in pointing... Then that looks like there's some tricky distinction here. Right. I thought I'd made that point you, to him. You did, and uh, this General Wilson didn't put out anything but what you said. I, I, they read it to me over Will the you phone. Somebody asked him what they mean by saying that about McNamara, no U.S. military personnel, because the fact of the matter is, 
We know that. Nobody has said that. They're talking about former guardsmen. Right. I thought I, I, but I mean, the point is, General, I told you that, but I didn't want these two things joined together because one then looks like the key word is guardsmen. Right. And uh, that's, uh, Sylvester had it absolutely clear, and he put it out clear. But I'll check up and see what McNamara did. Well, no, McNamara didn't put out anything. It says the Pentagon is the same thing. Well, I'll check. On I'd it, like right. to find out why they included that statement. Because how does that, then what does that mean that the, what do you call the Alabama group? Right. They're not U.S. military personnel, but then it then looks like uh, what we're doing is separating guardsmen from other people. And the fact of the matter, nobody did it. Nobody did it. Well, nobody I told accused them. Everybody. Well, they had it straight when I, they All called right, me. let's find out about it. I'll check on it right away. Find out about it. I'll check on it. Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, are you, you read Mr. Dodds? Uh, yes, I did. What did you think of it? Well, I, it, it's, it's a temperate and about as good a presentation to that point of view as you can get. I'm debating whether well, I should answer it again. Why don't you get another one ready and let me look at it? All right, I think fine. you might point out, two or three, one point is that if we'd gotten an agreement four years ago, you wouldn't have been, perhaps had these tests. I think that's right. If and, we had uh, an agreement four years ago, we'd been a lot better off. If we had not been, if we'd been able, because uh, the fact of the matter is, it isn't, uh, we tested, uh, that he gives the impression in that letter that it's the Soviet testing that's closed to, uh, as if we didn't test. Yes. The fact of the matter is that we were ahead. The more they test, the more we test. Even if we each ran a hundred tests, we tend to equalize. We tend to equalize, and so that will be with anyone else who begins to develop. They'll start way behind, and if each country continues to test, because you can't make those kind of extraordinary advances you made at the beginning, and the fact of the matter is if we'd gotten the agreement back in 59, or whenever it was we started, if it had, if it had prevented this large series of tests, we would have been better off. The second thing is, that neutron bomb, he's a nut on the neutron bomb. Two years ago, I think he was making some speeches about it. It was right around the corner, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. fact of the matter is, I don't see the neutron bomb as making any specific difference. Uh, neither do I. And uh, well, I've got a right, I think, uh, I've got right a left. tone that's agreed with you, Mr. President, that, that arguing with Tom Dodd is better than arguing with a Republican on this. It just so happens that Dodd and I have friends. Yeah. And I Why is it better? I'm not... cordial note. Yeah, all right, well, let's see what you get. I'll get it over to you. And then let me look at it. Right, okay. 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 Hello? Oh, Mr. President, yeah. there's a piece in the word of, yeah. a piece in the word of a supposed interview with this fellow Frederick Earle, who's the president of the board of Yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah. I wanted you to understand that as far as the department was concerned, we hit him very, very hard, and he had no basis for saying he got any sympathy. He said not only on the Woolens, but the other thing is that we understood we were sympathetic about his trade That's with the Soviet. That's what I mean. No, yeah. on, on the Soviet trade. Yeah. Uh, I talked to him myself, and we've never been rougher with anybody, so I've gotten getting to David Ormsby Gorian, and we're going to have him send a message to London that if Errol hadn't got any such idea, he's, uh, he's completely mistaken. That this is a matter we feel deeply and strongly about, and it's going to cause great trouble here. Is this on the pipe or just generally? On the pipe. Uh, on Did the he bring ship. up the pipe? Well, I brought up the pipe, I brought up the ship for oil deal, and I brought up the sale of the Viscounts, all three. Yeah. We hit him very hard. I told him that on the pipe that uh, they weren't going to get anything out of the pipe, but they were going to break the line, and the Germans were going to get the orders. But it would be very hard to, to uh, enforce anything under uh, uh, on a Western embargo after this, and that uh, uh, furthermore, the uh, this was something that was really hurting the Soviet Union, as it made clear to us, and that if they went ahead with this, I foresaw very great problems in this country on cooperation and a lot of other things. And on the ship for oil deal, if this was the beginning of Soviet penetration, oil penetration, it was going to cause trouble in the Middle East, going to cause great trouble here, and so on. Yeah. So that there was no doubt that he got the point, and this is a this is kind of rather a crude play on his part to, yeah. Yeah. to try to put yeah. us in this position. Yeah. So when the secretary has his press conference tomorrow, well, we're going to cook up a question and let him hit it hard there too. Right, right. So that there'll be no doubt back in London as to what the. I thought Walter Lippmann had a good article this morning. Well, I think that's useful to begin yeah. to, to get this out. He he the, uh, he misconstrued a little what uh, what Holstein was saying, but. I think the more we create the impression of concern here on this, whether the stronger our position will be, so it doesn't uh, right. doesn't worry me a bit. Okay, that's right. fine. Hello. Hello, oh, Mr. President. How are you? How are you? Very good. Fine. Fine. I just had some sad news. Tom Shanahan in New York passed away this morning. Oh, did he? Did he? Yes. You know, he was in an automobile accident. I didn't know that. Yes. About two weeks ago, he went right to the uh, windshield, and he had an awful time. He really had a purgatory here on that. Did he? Last two weeks. Was he usually unconscious? 
Well, now, he was conscious all along, uh, just towards the end, I guess. Uh, first, it was his leg, and he was on the operating table about from 8.30 to 10.30 at night, and uh, they, they thought they'd lose his leg, and then his ribs were all crushed, and then uh, he, uh, then his kidneys got involved, so I guess that's what killed him. But, uh, he was a really good friend of yours from way back. Well, it's his wife. He's got a widow. Yes, and children. I didn't know he was even sick or I would have sent him something. I tell you, well, I'll send her. Would you, let me put you, to, you on to some girl. Would yeah. you give him where I can send something? A message? Wait just a second. Yes, all right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Shanahan. Uh, that's Thomas Shanahan. Mrs. Thomas Shanahan. Uh-huh. And it's at uh, uh, the 100. Uh, I don't have the exact address of uh, uh-huh. Beach 143rd uh, Street, uh, 142nd Street, Beach 142nd, that's B-E-A-C-H, 142nd Street, uh, in the Pont- uh, Bell Harbor, 94, New York. Uh-huh. His wife's name is Ann, A-N-N-E, I guess. Okay. And, and they had children. They had a question. They had a question. I was down in San Francisco, Philadelphia, Brooklyn, or Boston. Well, uh, I'm with you all the way. We have no uh, results of this thing. This thing is yeah, but make sure that it's... Uh, <laughs> to, 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 let me know before anything begins to even surface on that thing. Cause those, Very definitely. Those places are our uh, home. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some rumor that they're even going to think about shutting down uh, uh, Treasure Island. Yeah. Which is just like drilling a hole through me. Yeah, well, I understand that, but you'd be... I wouldn't close down anything in San Francisco, Philadelphia, New York, or Boston. All right. Because we might just as well go home ourselves then. As long right. as if you like it down here, you better not close down those any of those yards. All right. I will. Uh, I'll stay right on that. I know exactly where I got it from. Okay. Listen, one other thing I wanted to uh, bring up that San Francisco, as far as the uh, convention, yeah. will meet any price of any city in the country. They've got a you know a t- hotel tax fund out there which has over a million dollars in it. Yeah. So they'll come in with a proposal of 700000 Okay, right. Okay, I'll check it. I'll let Bailey know that. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. 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 Yeah, well, there's one part that I think is good, which is yeah. the, the amount of uh, what, uh, what our situation was in the 30s in regard to farms being lit and all the rest. Right. And then to show what progress we've made in the last... Uh, all right. Years. It, uh, I think that's the good part of the speech. All the rest right. of it you may have some other thoughts about. All right, fine. Then uh, I have to make an opening statement, I guess, too, don't I? Yeah, you've got two others. You've got uh, one at the airport uh, when you come in, in the helicopter and meet all the other presidents. Then yeah. you've got your opening remarks at the conference, which every president will make about a 10-minute uh, little talk. Those are the only other ones of any consequence. And then okay. some well, off-the-cuff you... remarks that uh, oh, we'll prepare a sheet or two, you know. You've got, uh, well, you're getting some stuff together, right? That's right. I'm okay. getting it all together now. Okay, fine. Fine, Thank good. You. The way you stood up there and took an oath and all the rest made me proud. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I thought you looked terrific, and I thought it was very good, and I thought you did a terrific job on that TFX. Well, it was very good. I'm really working on that now. Yeah. We're, we're going to hit hit him hard tomorrow with a statement that uh, will be read, and then Bob will be cross-examined on it next week. But I think we can regain the initiative. Well, when you think that, uh, as you pointed out, that both the planes were satisfactory, it isn't as if. You know, and the way they've been handling that thing. Yeah. But if they'd only done that on the stockpile, we could have really, when you think that that case never, we never got that thing off the ground in a no. year, and they made the TFX, you know, when there hasn't been any uh, scandal. But anyway, I thought it was very good. Thanks very much, Mr. Bye, Rod. Right. Okay. <laughs> Construction will add a billion dollars to the budget. The pay raise will be almost automatic. Construction, you have to have appropriation for us, so maybe we'll be back with our budget figure. But does there's two things first it's, as a practical matter it does raise our budget yeah. secondly it's not a bad point to make I think it takes a lot of the guts out of the attacks on us yeah if we can make the point that the house of representatives in one week went a billion dollars over the president's budget it, uh, it seems to me it's pretty important for us politically mm-hmm. in uh, indicating that we after all set up a pretty hard budget maybe we're not the ones who are the great spenders etc etc yeah. 
I gather the reluctance of the uh, the reluctance of the leadership in this instance to some degree is that there's unanimity in this area. You know that'll yeah, be well, the just, problem we'll be faced with. Well, you'll have a voice vote. We don't want yeah. a roll call, but I, yeah. uh, what we're wondering is whether uh, Kermit Gordon would write a letter of the budget indicating that this what these, this will cost. Yeah. And uh, indicating that it also will cost about sixty or seventy million dollars in our gold flow. Right. Now, if he wrote the letter gratuitously, that's rather hard, or had a statement. The other way would be if a congressman wrote and asked him. Yeah. Now, uh, Why don't I'd I... just like to have the point made because it's, well, I don't want to have a fight with Vincent. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a goddamn good point. It is a, it is a damn good point. And uh, I uh, know that uh, Boggs, for one at least, is uh, perfectly willing to make the point on the floor, and I'm sure he can do it in a way that wouldn't get us into a jam up with Benson, but it, it, uh, I think this is worthwhile. And actually, I think there would be some real mileage in this in the press if they catch it. Well, now, there's two issues. You really have to put them together. Isn't the other one the uh, construction bill that will come out Thursday, supposedly? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, we ought to, maybe we could oppose that better than we could the pay raise. Mm. That uh, Kermit Gordon could then let it say that the, what you did in the House, $691 million plus this, well, it adds a billion, and we just feel that this is, a, you know, makes our budget problem more difficult, etc. Yeah. So it's a question whether he writes it on the pay raise or waits and does it Thursday on this other matter or whether he puts the two together or what he does. Would you think about yeah, it? Yeah, all right. Uh, the, I can see your point on the pay raise. That's a little touchy, not only in the same area as we have the other one, but also in the area of uh, reaction of the military and their families, of course. Well, the budget little, bureau is not uh, yeah. me and it's not yeah. McNamara. Right. It looks just like it's discussing what the... I mean, they'll pass it, but it will, yeah. it will, uh, it's a valid point. Why don't you let me think okay. about the procedure on it? Okay. All right. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? Well, I don't think they're very happy, and I have to make you personal friends, but I think we lost up the record and used up a half a day to give Bob a half a day chance to get more ready. Yeah. Uh, but uh, would they uh, eat on you? Oh, they, 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 were, they were pretty mad about everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mean they just like to give it, you know. They never like to take it up Well, they thought it got it. And, uh, and, uh, our, I know my cop was a gad. He said, oh, God, you didn't make me friends. They'll kill you. And I said, well. Who said this? Oh, Jack Stemper, who was there from our, law, our legal office. Yeah. This was after you finished? Yeah, after Because they had me there. And then we got all through. They said, well, why didn't you apologize? We wouldn't be here for two hours. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a neat comment. I, I said, thought you did, and you let us. That's what I told them. What'd they say? Well. Well, then they, then they, I don't know what they wanted after that. I point, and then they didn't like it because I said that I thought that the full picture hadn't come out and the way it's coming out and the Defense Department's uh, view of this whole thing, which was a matter of high uh, defense policy, was came out in a way that the public got a distorted view. Well, that started them off. I was making a record, and that was what making them wild, of course. Yeah, yeah. When did they release your record? Right away it's being released. Oh, is it? Uh, uh, I read to them the story out of the Chicago Daily News by Jim McCartney, whom yeah. I talked to this morning, which began by saying that ten investigators have made up their mind that this is a bad contract. Yeah. And then a quotation from an investigator who said, quote... Yeah, about the planes. That's you correct. Yeah. Well, I didn't like that. I kept reading that as many times as I could. What'd they say then? <laughs> they deny they said that? Well, they didn't even ask. Or they wouldn't ask, you know. They were was like, Jackson there? With who? All the, every one of them was there. They were all there. And Scoop, what's he, how's he defending his? Oh, he was, you know, he was bolting the hell out of me, saying I'd made many mistakes, and I, I, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then Munt finally said to me, well, you've been quoted as saying that you don't believe in telling the truth, but this affects your testimony. And then I said, Senator, this is an insulting remark on your part. I have taken a note. And I, well, he backed way away from it then. Yeah. You know, they were trying to give me the work there. Yeah, yeah. It's quite an enjoyable day. Yeah. The record will be thoroughly confused, but we'll have a lot of things on the record that these guys will pick up, and that's what's bothering them, really. Yeah, yeah. When does Bob go up there? I have not been back this morning. This How was McClellan? Uh, he got pretty mad when I kept reading the Chicago Daily News thing. I didn't yeah. read it once. I think I read it four times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this made a while. Okay, good. Fine. Okay. Right out.